Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sneha and today I'm going to be sharing all about my new Lisa Elridge lipsticks, lip glosses, lip liners and also share with you guys swatches and also maybe some possible dupes because I do realize that some of these shades are out of stock currently and they do not seem to be coming back until I believe uh, next year. So in case you don't want to wait, maybe these tubes, at least in terms of color, will help you guys. So let's get started. So I placed my order on launch day within the first few minutes or so. And I'm so glad I did because a lot of products did get uh, out of stock or sold out within a few hours, I believe. So I'm very happy that I got the shades that I really wanted. And in terms of how quickly I received the products, I did get a shipping notification on the 19th of October and it was here, I believe on the 20th of October, if I'm not wrong. So very quick delivery. Now I have been a big fan of the Velvet formula since I purchased Velvet Ribbon in 2018. And this is what that looks like. In case you were curious, I have made quite a bit of dent in this. So I was very excited when Lisa revealed that she's going to come up with new shades this time and also new formulas. So what I picked up was Velvet Affair, which is what I have on my lips right now. It is the perfect mix of brown with peach and pink undertones, which I feel like it makes it very flattering on various skin tones. This is absolutely stunning and that's just one swipe that I have on my lips. And as expected, the formula is very consistent with the previous Velvet formulas. And lastly, I picked up the Velvet Blush Kit, which comes with this lovely bag, which I absolutely love. So this is what the pouch looks like with Lisa's logo engraved on the front, also on the tab of the zipper. So you can see that. Yeah, that's our logo there. Very smooth, beautiful pouch. I really have no complaints. It is velvet, so I feel like it will get dirty at some point. So I'm not going to use it much. I'm going to save it because this is absolutely beautiful and I feel like it's a collector's item almost. So that's that. And in here, I received the velvet blush lipstick. So this is what that shade looks like. Mine broke, unfortunately, when I was uh, doing swatch it. I'd not even applied it to my lips yet. So I did contact the customer service and they were kind enough to send a replacement, which is on its way, but it completely broke from the base. But they said that this could be possible because the formula is so pigmented that it can sometimes be slightly dry. So that is Velvet Blush. It is a beautiful, deep rose color, which looks very flattering on Indian or Asian skin tones. But I feel like with this shade, I feel like every skin tone can get some use from it. It is just flattering. I feel like rose in general is very flattering on various skin tones from the lightest to the deepest skin tones. Unless you have a very strong uh, orange undertone, that's the only time I would say. Maybe skip on this and get uh, say well with Dragon I feel like, which is more of an orange color. But overall I feel like this will be very flattering on majority of skin tones. Which is why I feel like the kit is sold out. And the kit also came with the blush gloss. This is a beautiful container, beautiful packaging, again with Lisa's logo on the cap. And then in here, you do get a beautiful sized doe foot applicator, which looks like that, which does pick up a decent amount of product, uh, but at least on my lips, I have to dip in twice, once for the bottom lip and once for the top, just because I like for the color to be on my lips. But if you want to apply it more sheer, then just one dip is enough and you can just press your lips together. And lastly, the kit also came with a lip pencil. This is the first time Lisa Elridge is launching lip pencils. So I was excited to try these out and they do not disappoint. This is what it looks like up close. The body is quite similar, I would say, to Charlotte Tilbury packaging. So if I were to keep Charlotte Tilbury next to it. You can see that while Charlotte Tilbury is more rose gold, Lisa's is more yellow gold. But I like that they both have the color indicator at the bottom. And Lisa's pencil is definitely longer. That may also be because I have used the Charlotte Tilbury pencil for quite some time. And this is what it looks like inside. I have used it, so it's not sharpened. Now in terms of the pricing, the Velvet Lipsticks retail for £26 here in the UK. And unfortunately right now, Velvet Affair is out of stock. 
but Velvet Beauty, in case you were interested, is available to purchase as a single. The gloss retails for £18 here in the UK and currently Velvet Beauty is out of stock but there are other shades available if you'd like to purchase but only as a part of a kit. I think all the glosses are sold out in case you want to purchase them individually. The lip liners are available only as a part of the kit, at least this year. So in case you were interested in this, you do have to purchase a kit of your colour choice. Now the kit including this pouch retails for £63. And if you were to break down the price of individual products, the bags retail for around £19, I believe. The lip glosses retail for £18. The lipsticks retail for £26. And that brings the price of the lip liner to £1, which was an absolute steal. And if you still can, I would highly encourage getting a lip kit, especially if there is a shade that you really love. It is worth getting the kit. As far as the packaging is concerned, it is absolutely stellar, which is what you would come to expect from Lisa Eldridge. I really have no complaints. Everything from the pouch to the lipstick to the lip gloss to the lip pencil, everything is perfection. Now coming to the texture of the formula. Now as far as the velvet lipstick formula is concerned, you probably are familiar with the finish and the texture of the lipstick just because it's been around for at least two years, I believe. But in case you are new to Lisa Eldridge lipsticks, they look like velvet, especially the outside case. This one is broken, but let me get something that is not broken. So hopefully you can see on camera that it has a velvet finish on the outside. Do you see that? But the tip does not have that velvet finish. So that's something very unique with her lipsticks. Now, as far as the formula is concerned, it is richly pigmented. And when I say that, don't take it as a joke. I would say in terms of pigmentation, the closest one would be Pat McGrath Matte Trans Lipsticks. That's how pigmented these lipsticks are. But when it comes to Lisa's lipsticks, I feel like they have slightly more punch and a little bit more matteness, if that makes sense. Almost like it has been a powdered down version. Uh, not in a bad way, but just the finish of the lipstick, if that makes sense. I don't know if it will translate on camera, but that is one swipe of the lipstick. And if I bring it in closer, hopefully you can see the matte texture. I'm just going to quickly swatch next to it Pat McGrath lipstick and a Charlotte Tilbury lipstick, Matte Revolution one, just so you can see the difference in the finish of the matte lipsticks. So with Pat McGrath, I'm going to do Flash 5. I need to do it right next to it. Right there. Do you see that it has a creamy finish whereas the Lee Selridge one is more matte? It reminds me quite a bit of MAC powder case lipsticks but once it's blotted like that powdery dry kind of uh, finish but it's still hydrating that's what this reminds me of. And for Charlotte Tilbury let's go with Pillow Top 2. I'm going to do one swipe right here. As you can see, it's more sheer compared to the first two lipsticks. And if I were to go over it a few times, this is what that looks like. Hopefully you can see the shine on both the Charlotte Tilbury and the Pat McGrath lipstick. Whereas Lee Selridge lipsticks are just a bit more matte, if that makes sense. Now that is as far as the lipsticks are concerned. Let's move on to the lip liner texture. So this is the Lee Selridge lip liner. Going to do one swipe for each lip liner. That is hers. I would say hers is more on the sheer side compared to say Charlotte Tilbury or a Pat McGrath lip liner. So just keep that in mind. Therefore I don't get as much opacity with this unless I go over it twice or thrice. Uh, but that still gives you a different kind of a look if you're in the market for that. Next I'm going to do a Pat McGrath lip liner. This is in the shade Suburbia. And if I were to swatch it right next to it, one swipe, you can see hopefully that it's more pigmented than the first one. With the Lee Selridge one, you can still see a lot more of my skin. And for Charlotte Tilbury, let's do the Lip Cheat in Bond Girl. So if I were to swipe it right here, bring it in closer, you can see that the Lee Selridge liners are just a bit more sheer compared to the other two formulas. But all three bands are equally long wearing. Next, as far as the gloss is concerned, I really didn't find anything exact, if that makes sense. And I feel like this is a beautiful combination of not just a gloss, but also lip oils, which is fantastic. It feels very 
nourishing and hydrating but ha still has that beautiful shine on the lips and there is enough pigmentation on this that I can wear it on its own even on my pigmented lips. So I really appreciate that about this formula and the day I received it I did have uh, some dry flakes or patches on my bottom lip and applied this and within a couple of hours or so my lips were so soft and later that night when I was washing my face I just rubbed a flannel across my lips which I generally do but the dead skin just came off so easily so since I've received it I've also tend to use it as a lip balm kind of a product so during the day I'll just add a little bit of this gloss on top just to get that nourishment from this lip gloss two lip glosses lip oils that kind of have that similar kind of effect on my lips the first one is by beauty pie this is their wonder gloss collagen lip oil this looks very red but it's very very sheer and again has that beautiful nourishing quality to it but it's not as creamy and balmy like the lisa elridge lipsticks so this is probably more on the sheer side and slightly less nourishing i would say Next is the Viseart lip glosses and I feel like this is very close to the Lee Selvage formula. Just that this one is just slightly less thick or less balmy compared to the Lee Selvage one but very similar in terms of how lightweight they feel on the lips and how hydrating they are. So another alternative if you can't find the Lee Selvage lip glosses in stock. And lastly when compared it with the Pat McGrath lip glosses these I would say are more gloss like. I don't think these have particularly lip nourishing kind of treatments or properties to it. So I would consider this more of a traditional lip gloss but just that it's not sticky like regular lip glosses. Whereas the other three that I first showed you guys definitely have more of the skin or lip treatment nourishment kind of properties to it. Next let's move on to the lip swatches of these products. Now let's talk about some dupes. Uh, now these are not dupes in terms of the formula, if that makes sense. The Velvet lipstick formulas are quite unique in my opinion and therefore it's not a dupe for the formula but more so a dupe for the shade, if that makes sense. So first when it comes to the Velvet Affair lipstick, I'm just going to do a swipe right here. I don't really have a lipstick dupe for it. But one that is very, very close in terms of color is the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in the shade Hot Gossip. So I'm just going to swatch it right next to it. So you can do the comparison. So this first one here is the Velvet Lipstick, Velvet Affair. And this is the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Liner. And if you're looking for a lip liner just very slightly darker than the lipstick, I would recommend MAC Hover Lip Liner. So I'm just going to swatch that, which is right there. So this third one right here is MAC Hover. Two other lip liners that are kind of similar 
in terms of depth but have a slightly more pink undertone compared to the warm tones in these shades. The first one is by Beauty Pie and the lip liner is in the shade Foxy which is one of my favorite nude lip liners. So I will put it right up here. You can see that that is slightly more pink compared to the peachy tones in here but it's very close. And then lastly we have the MAC lip pencil in the shade Spice Classic. Again, this one is just slightly, ever so slightly more pink compared to the newly salvaged lipsticks. So that right there is Spice, followed by Foxy by Beauty Pie. This is Hover by MAC. This is Hot Gossip by Charlotte Tilbury, the lip cheat. And this is Velvet Affair. So against my skin tone, this is what those shades look like. Two lipsticks that are kind of similar are MAC Taupe and MAC Persistence. I'm just going to swatch those. So this is MAC Taupe. You can see it's more pink toned compared to the Lisa Elbridge Velvet Affair lipstick. And this one is Persistence which is slightly more warm toned and slightly more brown or deeper than the Velvet Affair shade. But if you have those lipsticks you can see how much of a variance there is. So those are all the similar shades that I found in my collection for Velvet Affair. Next let's move on to Velvet Blush. Now Velvet Blush, this one is broken so I'm just going to swatch it right here. There you go, that's at the bottom. Now again I didn't find a lipstick that's very close to this but a lip liner that is very close is Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in Bond Girl. So I'm just going to swatch it right next to it. So there you go. The bottom one is Velvet Blush. The second one right here is uh, Bond Girl by Charlotte Tilbury. And the two lipsticks, again, one is Bond Girl, but because the texture is more creamy and uh, slightly less pigmented, the shade looks slightly different. Again, I'm out of this. I'm just taking some with my spatula. I feel like the lipstick is just a bit more pink or plum in tone compared to the other two. You can see that, that is Bond Girl. And the other lipstick that I found was similar is Cat 1D Lolita lipstick. There you go. So the top one is Cat 1D Lolita, this one. Then we have Charlotte Tilbury Bond Girl Matte Revolution. Then we have Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in Bond Girl, which is probably the closest one to Well Wet Blush. And against my skin tone, this is what the shades look like. I will also show you the comparison of Bond Girl lip liner with the new Lisa Eldridge lip liner. So moving on to that next. Okay, starting with the Lisa Eldridge lip liner, I'm doing one swipe and then on top of that I'll do a heavier swatch. So this is the light swatch. And then on top of that I'm going to do a deeper swatch. So you can see the variation you can get with the same lip liner. Right next to it I'm going to swatch some shades that I feel are close to it. The first one is the Lip Cheat in Bond Girl. So that's the third one. Then we have Pat McGrath Lip Liner in the shade Suburbia. Just the one at the top right now. Very close all of these. And the last one I have is the Makeup Forever Aqua Lip in the shade 14C. So if I bring it closer, there you have it. I would say the Makeup Forever one is probably slightly lighter than the other three, but the other three are extremely close. So, so if you were unable to get the Lisa Elbridge Lip Pencil, you can try either Pat McGrath Suburbia or the Charlotte Tilbury Bond Girl Lip Pencil. So in comparison to my skin tone, this is what those shades look like. And as far as the gloss is concerned, I have no dupes for it. Most of my glosses are clear or slightly more peachy or warm or more cool tone. So there's nothing really quite similar to blush gloss. But that's really it for this video. If you found this video helpful, definitely give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing for more videos. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!